<laughs> All right, we made it and we're laughing, so yay for us. Yay we're for at us. Voice 22. You're the platinum sponsor. Uh, the whole entire voice team is incredibly grateful for Veritone, for you as a leader, for your team. You have more than a dozen people here, this really amazing, fascinating, engaging booth. Um, not everybody knows who Veritone is, so maybe yep. you could tell me uh, a bit about you and your brother, Chad, the background, how sure. did Veritone become, and where you at today? Yeah, we've been, um, thank you for, it's been great to be here. Yes, um, it's great to have you. It's great to see you. It's packed show. Um, you know, we've been in, my brother and I have been in sort of the internet advertising space, which really where we started yep. our career in the mid-90s, right. right out of school, and, you know, the, our primary career has been ad tech, yep. you know. And we like to say is, if there was a place to serve an ad, we were really good at it. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've had several great successful businesses. We sold a previous ad tech business to Google, and right. I headed up a lot of their um, offline advertising efforts. And I think the biggest thing you learned um, working at Google was scale, yeah. right? Just whatever you have been thinking you've been doing in the past, just add two orders of magnitude to right. it, right? right? And the other thing is, Everything we've done is the exact same thing we're doing now today with AI. It's all about data, mm. right? Being able to ingest, process, make decisions against or about, right? right? And get those decisions and intelligence out the door as quickly as possible, right? right? Ad tech, that's what it is, yes. right? You have a bunch of ad requests. I have to choose what audio or visual ad I have to serve, I have yeah. to, and I have to serve it to the right target audience, and I have to do it in, in, in a few milliseconds. Right. So when you think of when now Veritone as an enterprise AI company, right. what we specialize in is helping companies who have lots of structured and unstructured data, right. ingest it, create a data lake, yeah. apply AI machine learning to it, yes. and then help them build intelligent workflows and applications right. to turn that into value. Yes. And that value is a very broad term. It could be trying to help them increase subscription rates. It could try to be optimizing advertising campaigns. Yes. It could help programming, choosing the right content to put on Sports Center at night. Right. Right. So the use cases are all across the map. It's cr it's helping create the right framework yeah. so they can act upon these do new opportunities right. quickly. Yes. So, um, but again, our, with our background in in advertising, um, media and entertainment is is by far our largest market opportunity right. today as uh, so far. Um, we work with hundreds of media and entertainment cu customers. I mentioned ESPN, where I'll, give, I'll use them as one example. We ingest all of their content, their podcasting, and their digital native content. They're actually live radio streams for their 982 right. stations. We ingest everything in near real time. We index yes. it. And now they use a suite of different applications that allows them to run their business better, and right. smarter, and faster, and hopefully make more revenue. Um, so that's you know, very, somewhat similar to the different types of businesses. Um, you know, whether it's Warner Brothers or it's, again, ESPN or iHeartMedia, right. that's kind of generally what we've done. Yes. Um, through that, and this will kind of go into the, to the passion for voice, is we've been, we've, we, we, now that we're sitting on many petabytes of, of content that's been fully indexed, yes. they always, our clients always come back and say, what can we do more? Like, what's next? How much, Frank, let's put an analogy, is how, how can I squeeze more juice out of that onion. Right. Sorry, onion or lemon? Lemon, not an onion. That'd Who be gross. Who doesn't like onion That'd juice? be gross. Come on. That'd be gross. <laughs> Sorry. I've been traveling west coast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so an example is um, CBS News, who's a right. big client, and very similar use case. We ingest both their new and historical archive content. Yep. And we had an idea and said, hey, what if we, you know, we're indexing this content to such a great degree of accuracy, and we're also now isolating the voices mm -hmm. from the historical content seems like we're sitting on a treasure trove of training data. Right. So it's, no longer, it's no longer taking the audio video in and acting upon it. The right. audio and video we're ingesting is actually the training data, yes. if that makes sense. So that's really was kind of the aha moment about a, about a year and a half ago. Okay. And, and so you know, that's where we, when we set out um, initially working with third-party voice AI companies right, right. who were building you know, neural-based voices from scratch, et cetera, yep. et cetera. And, um, you know, we just felt with our kind of expertise in, in the space at scale that if we could come up with an enterprise class synthetic voice solution, we, you know, we, we, could, we could turn it into a very interesting new business line for us. So fast forward today, you know, that's Veritone Voice. Right. Um, you know, it's, it, you know it, we actually have branded it as Veritone Voice now. Yes. It's, it's becoming such a big thing for right. us um, that we're thrilled. We're working with some of them. Um, if you saw my presentation earlier, we're working with some of the most iconic voices of all time. Um, it's you know, amazing. The, the Vin Scully's of the world, the, the Walter Cronkite estate, et cetera. But also, 
it, we want everybody. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's, you know, we've designed this to be completely self-service. Right. Um, but we've also designed it to work with the iHearts who want to yeah. show up with 200 voices. That's right. And they want to do this at scale. Right. Right. So, I mean, there's the, the number of use cases which are exciting when you come to these shows is we may walk in with an understanding of maybe 10 to 15 real salient use cases. Right. And just because the ecosystem is kind of, you know, we're putting a stake in the ground saying we're all in on this. Yes. And, 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 you know, conferences like Voice 22 is the, the amount of use cases that are presented to us are just incredible. Yes. Right. I mean, healthcare related. I just watched a presentation of the Navy, right, who's Amazing. trying to isolate you know, acoustics because they can't hear or speak at all. Wild. And so how are you going to use machine learning and, and be able to isolate voice and then turn that into a command to verbally speak to somebody else with another command in a right. engine room on a yes. Navy ship. So those are, and when we hear those ideas, we're excited. So, yeah. and I, I think we're in a great position as a company that I don't care how crazy your idea is, right. let's come to us, let's talk, let's see if we can turn that into a scale product. Right. Yeah. I often think Veritone is like a PR machine. The, uh, today you made a huge announcement. Do, do not please make my marketing head, Scott's head, any bigger, but, but I appreciate that. Uh, it, it has room for growth. <laughs> uh, and when we did a fireside chat at CES, yeah. you had a big announcement on product then. Uh, you had the massive you know, nine-figure contract close this year. And so a lot of major milestones just seem to kind of roll out. And it's not like making things uh, seem and appear to be cool. It's like you guys are doing really cool, innovative stuff. So can you just touch on like maybe this year in terms of some big milestones? Like what happened at CES, maybe the big DOD thing, the thing you announced today. I'd love for you just to kind of hit on some milestones that very um, just happened in 2022. Well, as a public company, you know, my whole life kind of starts and stops every 90 days, right? Each quarter to quarter. So You're like, I only remember I, the last yeah. couple of months. I mean, Ian, I'm like on. a teenager, right? <laughs> <laughs> like my purview is only so far ahead. Right. Um, but I, I'd, I'd call out two kind of tied into voice. Yes. Um, I think it's relevant is, um, you know, we just had our year anniversary um, after acquiring a company called Pandalogic. Okay. Um, you know, they're based here now, but they have major presence in Tel Aviv as well. Yes. And, and, and they're one of the leading um, AI based um, talent acquisition companies. Okay. Um, really making it easier for companies like Amazon, one of our clients and others to help them hire people at scale. Yes. And part of what was so appealing about that company was not just them har you know, harvesting you know, uh, huge amounts of data from you know, application tracking systems and the client's internal systems, right. but they had a passion for conversational AI and voice. Right. They felt that it was a limiting factor of trying to have great talent wait to be interviewed and talk to somebody. Yes. So they, um, we, we recently just launched and announced um, several weeks ago a new product line mm -hmm. um, through our division Pandalogic called Pando Select. Okay. Which is, think of it as just more of a self-service end-to-end framework so yes. companies can sort of manage and, and walk that talent through the entire application process, yep. completely synthetically driven through AI, right? Okay. Um, so that's a really exciting one. It's a big industry. Um, the labor market is crazy right now, right. right? It's either the great resignation or everybody's going to, you know. Right. So I think everybody it, right now, it seems like. It's two extremes. Yeah, it's, it's two extremes. Popping. Right now, right now, yeah, as you know, <laughs> unemployment rate is you're still very low. I think right. that's an arbitrary short term thing, sure. right? What's happening in the economy. So that's one. And then uh, maybe I'll just touch on the one we just announced yeah. um, you know, this morning, right. which was Stats Perform. Yep. So Stats Perform is the largest you know, AI and sports data company right. in the world. Um, they power, really, if you have a device or you're watching broadcast or you need sports data and you right. need it fast, you need it highly accurate, you go with Stats Perform. Right. Um, and they're, they're headquartered in London. I mentioned um, that the, uh, the founder was uh, Dr. James, the original, um, the, the man behind Billy Bean and, yes. that, and uh, um, Brad Pitt, maybe, right. to make people more pop sensitive to that. Um, but what that company does is every sporting event you can imagine, mm. and, and I've learned a lot about um, European soccer, yeah. aka football, soccer, um, football, and the number of teams they have there. It's incredible right. how much data this company is producing incredible. every single day. Wow. What we've done is by working together the last several months with Stats is we've created a, an enterprise class solution that turns all of that fragmented sports data into naturally spoken, spoken pros, right? right. play by play, yes. pre-game announcements, post-game announcements. Um, and it's just not static, you know, just the voice. It's we've built it that it can be dynamic for sessionary or temporal inputs, such as local weather callouts during the game. Yes. Um, 
at dynamic ad insertion. We got to make money on this, right? right. So we thought about it at, at that level, and we're and so we're we just announced that today. Um, the, our partners are here at the show from yeah. Stats. Um, you'll be able to listen to them tomorrow. Okay. They're going to be talking about that deal. Sean King from Veritone and, and Steve Zeller from Stats will be um, oh, leading fun. that panel. And so that's just an example of like the stuff that we're doing, um, and I'm so excited about. Well, I'm excited too. <laughs> Even I'm not with you. I'm like, I always love whatever I see with Veritone. I'm like, I love this company. Everything you guys do is so fun. Sean gave one of my favorite presentations I've heard on the metaverse. I think part of the reason why I loved it so much is because Sean's brilliant and what you guys are doing, touching the metaverse is exciting, but it's not a metaverse guy pushing a metaverse talk. It was someone kind of outside of like that little web free yeah. community. Uh, but Veritone is playing in that sandbox, right? So can you talk a bit about how does the metaverse play into Veritone's world? Well, <clears throat> we start with, if you look at the companies that are clients who we represent, they today still, 99.9% .9 of their business is not in the metaverse. Yes. So if I say the Masters Golf Tournament, yeah. right? You know, you know it, it is one of our iconic brands. They're probably the most, you know, probably most defensive of their brand, which they should be. Right. But like everybody, they have aspirations on what's tomorrow look like, right? right? So. You, when you, when you, you know, so they look at us as stewards. We've been working with them, helping them index their content, helping them monetize their content primarily right. offline, yes. right? Or I'll say web one and web 2.0. But when they look towards web three and the metaverse, um, you know, we really, frankly, are, are they're a consultant to them at times. Right. And after a answer simple questions is, why do you think you need to be in quote unquote the metaverse, yeah. right? Um, I think the biggest thing I can sort of is what in our in our learnings through this, we, we're talking primarily to, to content IP owners, broadcasters, is they they built for the last hundred plus years is building a business that looks at their end consumer as an audience, a listener, a subscriber, versus I mean if you don't understand when you move to Web three and, and Metaverse, it's community, yes. right? Forget everything else. Whether you want to have a NFT storefront, or you want to have, you know have avatars running everywhere, or you want to buy land for ten million dollars in a metaverse, I hope nobody does that right, right. now. Well, I mean, um, come on, Decentraland has yeah. twenty three daily active users. Twenty so it, three active, you know, right? It's, it's popping, obviously. It's like Dubai, right? Basically, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but that's you know. That, so, very simply, is it's coming. Yeah. It, how it's going to look and act. I mean, we think interoperability. Yep. Do not bet, bet on one platform. No, definitely not. You need to own your IP. Yes. You need to own your, you know, your, whether it's your voice, your advertisers, your talent. Um, make sure and demand it's interoperable. Make sure right. that you own copyright and IP. Right. The world of us putting all of our eggs into a Google basket or a meta basket, that can never happen right. Right, in yeah. this next opportunity with blockchain. That's the whole fundamental premise That's of the, the opportunity. Premise. Yeah. So, but so in, in effect, we encourage them for exposure, yes. right? Take strategic bets. And by the way, I mean, if you were trying to build a platform, you don't necessarily have to, I mean, you're dying to get the masters to come join right. you, right? right? So it's not, you know, so the, so the masters don't, don't, don't think that they have to pull out a checkbook, right? right. People are going to try to induce these marquee brands yes. to come say, hey, participate in my, you know, roadblocks world, et That's cetera. Right. Yeah. That's so, right. Anyway, we're doing a lot of different things. Vo you know, voice is very extensible, as I, we just talked about. It no goes, doubt. you can go, so all of our synthetic voices can go from offline to a full programmatic non-player character yes. opportunity in the metaverse. Um, but again, it, it really forget, I mean, I like to say, forget all of the secondary attributes of the metaverse opportunity. Just yep. what are you trying to achieve? Right. Right. What, what, what is your community going to look like? And right. by the way, who's going to manage your community? Because unlike an audience, um, there's one person that everybody should listen to, like from the, the IP, is his name Steve Aoki. He actually yep. spoke at the conference. He's probably, and pro he's the son of the founder of Benny Hanna, right. which is fascinating in itself. Puts on the best DJ concerts of all time. He's a world class DJ. You want to get caked? Yeah. It's fantastic. And he's the most, one of the most brilliant people Super I've ever innovative. met. Super innovative. He's on yeah. the cutting edge. It's really impressive what he's been doing. So, case in point is, you know, it's, it's happening it's there. Everybody should have, you know, take an independent perspective of what they're trying to achieve right. and have much more realistic timelines on when, frankly, they really need to be there. That's good. Yeah. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? Um, you know, the market's tough right now, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, it seems like every single day it's, you know, it makes, you know, 2000 look like, you know, a kiddie pool right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just falling off a cliff. Right. You know, we've been through this, you yes. know, um, I think this one's got even, you know, different existential issues. Sure. But, you know, 2000, 2000, you know, 2002 through 2002, was kind of a, a, a bloodletting for tech. Right. 
you know, this is a new emerging space, yeah. right? Voice IP, synthetic, synthetic contents, conversational AI. Um, you, know, you run into these periods, right? And, then, and we like to say, and is, this is when good companies become great. Yes. Right? But also, you know, the, the, the startups in this community, they're, they're, they're doing some amazing things. Right. And so, you know, we as a slightly larger company, we're trying to figure out, like, we are in this, right? Yeah. We want, we, we need a healthy, dynamic ecosystem. Right. We need startup communities to be, to be thriving. Because um, it's, frankly, it's going to make us stronger as well. Right. Right. So I'm hopeful that, that next year is, has the same gravitas as this one. Right. Despite, which probably is going to be another challenging year in the economy and sure. the stock market. Yeah. Final thing, community. You know, uh, I've done like a dozen of these interviews. You're the only interviewee that's gathered to, to be a group around. Uh, I'm just so louder than everybody, I think. Well, so. congratulations yeah. on your voice projection. Uh, community, what's <laughs> the importance of Voice 22? Because you are a platinum sponsor. Yeah. Uh, you've been committed to supporting Pete and Modev, putting these events on. You yep. continue to have that commitment. Why does this matter? Why should people that watch our fireside chat come to Voice 23? What's the importance of gathering all of us together? Well, first of all, these are the same, you see a lot of the same names. These are the people who are setting the narrative, yeah. right? And so I think there's a difference of being the first mover versus setting the narrative, right? If you look right. at there, these groups behind us are the majority of the sponsors, they're well-funded. Yeah. They will have a say on where the space is going, yes, they will. right? Because they're, in, 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 and they're putting the money behind it. Yeah. Um, there's, particularly when you have lawyers and other people who have opinions, yeah. right? You need capital behind to, you know, to really turn those ideas into case law, laws, et cetera, yeah. right? So everybody needs to be here because this is the, you know, this, the people actually attending this and the people on these sponsors, we're driving the industry. We're, we're, we're dictating with, some, with a pretty heavy hand of influence That's right. of where it's going. Thus, if you want to participate, you need to be here. That's right. Yep. Ryan, thank you for sitting down sure. with me. It's always a joy to do this with you. Anybody that's watching, thank you for your attention. My name's Ian Utili. I'm the CEO at Attention Live. I look forward to bringing you more of these fireside chats here at Voice 22 in Washington, D.C. Have a very happy day.